Mike Tedeschi, Portfolio Manager over at Perspective Wealth Planning. With the continued selling pressure that we saw yesterday, we have really only one area of the market that is up year to date. Everything else is now red. And as we can see here on the chart, our clear leader is energy. We've talked a lot about oil and gas. We'll do a little more in this video. We're going to take a look at a number of the other sectors because what I want to show you guys is that we had strength and breakouts in a number of different areas in the first portion of the year, all of which have been failed breakouts after the price action that we've recently seen. We're going to take a look in at some things like bonds and gold against the U.S. dollar to try to find an area of the market that might be at an area of support at the moment. Well, let's jump right into it here first. We're going to talk about the S&P 500. We had a big rally off of that 3850 level into this week and yesterday we had another intense selling day where we had a huge move down S&P 500 down 4% Nasdaq over 5% and that selling has continued overnight I'm filming this Thursday morning before the market opens the key is going to be can we hold the lows from a week or so ago if not we're going to have another setup like this where we traded in a range, rallied to the top of it, got smacked down, rallied to the top of it, got smacked down. And we're starting to look back to the beginning of last year on that 3600 level as that next potential area of support. But let's go back and let's take a look now at how this year has played out. We're going to start with financials. So I've got the uh, XLF chart up here. And we started the year by breaking out to new all-time highs. This was unable to hold. And from that point forward, we continue to make lower highs and lower lows. So financials are in that downtrend after that false breakout at the beginning of the year. Now, the semiconductor index, same kind of comments apply. It had the breakout to new highs back in November. And then it actually did take and make a new all-time high at the beginning of this year. This zone up here failed we fell back into the previous range back tested that zone it was resistance tried one more time was resistance and now is underneath of that 420 support level and looks like it could continue to push to the downside so another area that had that false breakout now the transportation stocks i want to look in at a couple of different names we'll take a look at unp uh for the railways huge break and i mean Middle of end of April, we were at all time highs, and then we had that intense selling in the transport sector, drove it back below that breakout zone, a tiny little rally, and now continues to break lower. So, false breakout there in the railways. Um, we have JBHT, which we're going to look at from a trucking standpoint. A new breakout to all time highs was unable to hold above that strong selling creates a bear flag and as a subsequent breakdown here over the last couple of sessions you know the last little bit of support in here at 160 but same kind of comments apply false breakout immediate turn reversal and push down now the areas of the market that had been working most recently utilities Right, Utilities had pushed up and made a break to new all-time high of a March, pushed up, made a nice high tight flag, and then instead of breaking out, pushed back down. And there's now trading in that potential bear flag with the potential to get back underneath of that previous resistance zone 70, which we're hoping to act as support. Now, this is not fully broken down yet, so we still have that support at 70, but if it follows what we've seen in the other areas of the market that had been leading at some point during the year, we should be looking at this for that potential breakdown here um, in the near future. Lastly, the last area to really get hit was those consumer staples. We had that breakout, and we actually were making new highs here almost into May, False breakout, a move back underneath of that zone, bear flag, and then a huge opening move to the downside yesterday and strong selling off of the backs of Walmart and Target. But it wasn't just Walmart and Target. Some of the other areas that had been working got smashed yesterday. Coca-Cola, right, had made new all-time highs recently. A monster move down there. We had seen things like Kraft making uh, new highs, pushing up beat down. General Mills was another area, right? New all-time highs a couple of days ago, and then that huge move to the downside. When these breakouts have failed this year, they haven't been 
just sort of move back into a range base and then push back up. They have been met with swift and strong selling pressure and some very intense one-day liquidation moves across the board. This is not healthy action, and as we know, when we take a look in at the major indexes, if we look in at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is now below where it was in 2021. So we have a entire year now where we are underwater on the NASDAQ. We're down here. This is where 2021 opened. So we gave up over a year's worth of gains. We're underneath that key 13,000 level. We back tested it. It failed and looks like it's continuing to roll over, putting, as we've talked about, the coronavirus breakout in 2020 back on a potential move here for the NASDAQ. So what has been working this year? Well, we know that oil has been working, all right? So if we look at where oil started this year, guys, oil started this year around $75 a barrel. It's trading at 104. We've had to push all the way up to 130. We have a very similar setup in on gasoline. Now, gas and oil were hit with everything yesterday, but gas did make a new all-time high, trading over that $4 zone. It's moved back down, it's still trading above 350. That's the key level that we've laid out here for quite some time that we'll continue to watch. When you take a look at an oil and gas names, right, we've got uh, uh, a push, and we're still trading up near those highs. A little bit of a reversal yesterday with the weakness in the overall market, but still very, very strong for the year as we've seen. Now, the other area of the market that had worked well in the beginning of the year that we didn't touch on was the metals and mining companies, all right? So things like Alcoa had ripped and made new highs. They're trading back to flat, and these are kind of incredible moves when you think about that Alcoa was up 65% at one point this year and is now essentially flat for the year. Um, Freeport McNaran Copper was up 25%. It's now down 15% for the year. And even things like uranium, Cam uh, Co. CCJ was up 40% for the year and is now flat. So we have a lot of these false breakouts and swift, sharp moves in the opposite direction. Part of this has to do with the fact of the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar, all right, the commodities are priced in U.S. dollars, we know, has been extremely strong. But over the last couple of days, we have started to see this potentially turn back as well. Now, the uh, key level on this is that 103 zone. We've talked about it many, many times. 20-year kind of highs here. The highest monthly close that we've had was actually in April. It did uh, close over where we were in December of 2016. This candle is forming right now. Does look like you know could be a potential reversal candle. Again, the month isn't over, and these are monthly candles, so we have to pay very close attention to it. Now, if the U.S. dollar stops working here, what could potentially work? Well, bonds are actually at a very interesting spot. I'm going to pull this chart back up. This is a 30-year, and we're going to look at this on a monthly time frame. Look at where we are at. Pointed this level out. We've had it drawn on the chart for quite some time. We've talked about it. This was this area of resistance. And once we broke out in 2014, this is 2014 right here, right? We tested it again in 2018 during the taper tantrum and it held and we pushed. We came all the way back to this level and we said it. This would be a logical spot for a bounce. Doesn't mean that this is bottom. This was just a very clear level on the chart where we could see a technical bounce as bonds had been absolutely horrendous throughout the course of the year. Right. If the U.S. dollar weakens, this is an area I would pay very close attention to. We have a level to key off of, and that's what we look for, an area in which we can make a logical decision on. The other area that we'd like to take a look at if the U.S. dollar starts to weaken is gold. Gold has given out the whole move back as well here. But gold was up. It was a leader. It's still slightly up for the year. This is where we opened the year at. This is where we're at now, so just a tiny move. But it moved all the way up into that 2100 zone, which was a really important level, failed, came back down, and what did it do? It tested the lows of the year and that um, area from last December that was really important. The 1780 zone came down, tested it, started to turn back up. If the U.S. dollar continues to be weak, you have a level on gold that makes sense to take a look at as well. So while the overall market itself does not look good, we've got false breakouts across a number of different sectors. There are still some areas in the market that are trading at key levels where you have a decent risk to reward setup should things start to turn around. If the U.S. dollar also starts to weaken, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of pressure relieved in on tech as well because that has basically been trading inverse to bonds. So if we are going to see that 30-year hold this zone, we might see a little bit of relief in the tech and growth space that has been absolutely crushed so far this year.
It's got to prove it to us, however, though, guys, because, again, there is just so much technical damage in on these charts. It has been a series of lower highs with very clear resistance points. I'm actually going to zoom in on the NASDAQ here on an hourly basis, and you can see very, very clearly um, the levels and how this has played out. So since we kind of topped out back in here, right at this 1500 level, you've got clear resistance here, clear resistance here, and clear resistance here. And the chart has been very clear, rallied into a resistance zone and then swift move in the opposite direction. And that is what we're facing right here. It's got to break below that 11689 uh, on the NASDAQ. But this has been the pattern that has been in play since April. Run into resistance, can't get going, and it immediately continues to sell in on the downside. Bottom line, where we're at here, guys, we do not have any leadership in any of the major sectors in the market outside of energy. And as we know, if gas and oil prices continue to stay high, it cuts into the bottom lines of companies. It takes extra money out of consumers' pockets. And so while the energy space may continue to uh, look like a good spot, it is going to continue to weigh on the rest of the economy. And if that is the case, as you've seen, we have seen consistent leadership names make that breakout and immediately flip and turn the opposite direction. The price action out there is extremely ugly. We need to play defensive here and be in that kind of protectionary mode until things change. If you guys have any questions, anything you guys would like to talk about with the overall markets, feel free to reach out at mtedeski at perspectiveofplaying.com or you can give me a call at 814-580-9881. Stay safe out there, guys. Take